Hey guys, how's it going? This is Gershon from Technical Option Traders. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, been off for the last few uh, days here, just taking a vacation, uh, but we're back now. And if, as you guys can see, we'll talk about the markets and uh, what's been going on overall, right? Uh, so overall, uh, the last couple of weeks have been very, very interesting, right? So with the S&P 500 to begin with, S&P 500 pulled up right here. If you look at the daily chart, right? So S&P 500, uh, we're gonna make sure that we have all of our uh, sessions uh, up here. But if we look at it, a huge push up consolidation, and now we have a breakdown. This is why you never ever trade a consolidation. You never, so whenever a downtrend is happening, you know there's going to be a pullback, right? But wait and let price price absorb and wait for the volume to pick up. This is what we talk about in our trading community. This is where we give out successful signals and we give out successful trades. The link for that is in the bio, right? If you guys like what we do, please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. So look at the S&P 500. The volume here was very, very weak. It was very flat. It wasn't rising. So as this move was going up, the volume was going down. This is not what what this tells us that a lot of participation that is happening in the market is not strong. There's not a lot a lot of strong buyers that are ha coming through in the market right now. Okay, so with this consolidation zone right here, where the market is consolidating up and down, this is telling us that buyers and sellers are at an acceptance point. Then uh, that this is where the market wants to go, uh, you know, at a standstill. A lot of participation may have left. This was also due to the fact that this is before, uh, you know, talks about the Fed meeting start to happen. As soon as this move came down, this was on based on the policy, uh, based on news that once again that Fed may be looking to do one uh, 0.75 basis increase, and also because the CPI data came harder than expected. So this is something that we have to uh, pay attention to that economic data is starting to really really impact the market before economic data was there but it wasn't uh you know so terrible in moving the market right now economic data is moving the market to a whole different level so this is where we have to be cautious and how we look at the market overall s p 500 went we tested this level at uh, 380 push back up now we're breaking below 380 uh we're crossing down target is 370 uh right now for me however i am very suspicious about this gap down with the fed meeting Coming up, uh, they have said that they're expecting a 0.75 uh, increase, a 50% chance of a 1% increase uh, this Wednesday. However, I feel what I feel is that they're giving out. Uh, really negative narrative. So if the numbers are not bad, so the Fed only sticks with the half a basis point increase, what that's going to do to the market is going to is going to cause an aggressive rally. Okay. So in the previous bear markets, there's been about uh, there's been a few rallies. We've already had two rallies close to 11 percent. So on Wednesday, we could possibly see a test of 370 and then a quick rally back to 385 based on how the Fed reacts. Right. So if you guys are looking at this right now, the S&P 500 is down 3.2 percent. Okay. So looking at the overall picture on the s p let's look at the daily here right s p 500 is down about 20 percent year to date right however this is this is absolutely right now phenomenal as you guys can see these massive gap downs we have not seen this in the s p 500 since about 2020 which is right about here okay so the fact that we're getting these gap downs right now is absolutely something to be uh i would be concerned about it and over the last few days, as you guys can clearly see here, uh, we're starting to see rising volume here in the selling, right? So what, that's what we have to pay attention to on a weekly. Look at this, right? So we got we got the head and shoulder formation that's clearly being accepted. If we break below 370, we're easily going back down to test about 324 or that level right there. But the big level remain will, remaining will be 340, right? So the talks about going higher are completely done. Melt up is completely out of the picture for me. Uh, with this consolidation, we just made a higher low once again, right? Compared to this high and this high. So this is a lower high. Okay, so this is something that we have to pay attention to. The pressure continues to be against the bulls here, right? So the pressure is continuing to be uh, to the downside. Uh, let's look at the triple Qs here, right? The triple Qs are down about thirty, uh, about thirty-two percent. Okay, in this current market, this is an aggressive and volatile move to the downside. Okay, guys. So with the tech being killed off like this, what we're looking at, uh, we're already back to about you know, 2020 uh, August levels. But right now the bigger level is coming up right about here, uh, which is uh, 260, 259. If this level gets defeated, yeah, very easily we could go back down and test uh, uh, the 237. With rising interest rates uh, on the horizon and Fed tightening, uh, you know, the outlook for the market remains very, very bleak, uh, you know, for sure right now. 
and as you guys can see, a lot of these consolidation and breakdown are continuing to lead uh, this uh, this move downwards, right? So this week is very important because we got FMOC coming on Wednesday. So we expect a lot of volatility. Uh, however, if you guys can see here, this rising volume, right, which was started off right here. So this is why for me, 330 is a big level. This selling volume increased at 330. So and then after that, it kept just going higher and higher. So if the bulls are going to get back in the picture or I want us to trade long, I need triple Q to get above 330. There's no there's no other reason for me to get long triple Q until that happens. So a lot of people uh, are looking at like, you know, day to day trading or, you know, a, a lot of that. But right now you have we have to take a pedal, uh, foot off the, the gas here and be a little uh, and look at bigger time frames and get better setups. A lot of moves are happening in the pre market and after market. So you have to look for the long term uh, picture. So even if rallies are coming, let them come, let it let the dust settle and then look is there continuous buying pressure that is starting to show up right now if we look at the VIX right now the VIX is up 7% VIX is about 19% so this is up right now but interesting fact is the gold is still starting to take hits it's not really uh, you know holding up really well uh, gold right now but I'm not going to be short gold until below 164 165 so that is something to keep an eye on but right now triple Q is uh, interesting uh, looking at Dow Jones here Dow Jones unable to get above uh, back above this level so we had a nice rally we needed to get above this unable to get above this like the regular markets gapping down like crazy um and uh you know and we're back to 305 306 level if this level breaks right here we're gonna be looking at uh 298 very very soon right 298 breaks we got a gap we go down here to about uh 285 right so uh, the dow jones looks very weak uh very soon uh, at this level at 298 we could be coming down to the uh, the 2019 level right so that's something to keep an open mind on right yes we can bounce yes we can go rally again but look for the bigger levels if you guys are not looking at the bigger levels you're going to start losing here i know a lot of people were looking to uh, go long here that possibly we're going to go up yes could we have gone up from here after this consolidation absolutely but we, what we would have seen is we would have seen buyers come in at about 332 and push them up to 340 and uh, 350 level right but we are not seeing that happen right now what is ha that's why you have to wait you have to wait for confirmation you have to wait for volume you cannot just go by the fact that yes it's testing this level it's going to break out because the overall consensus in the market right now is bearish there's fear all over the place so you have to take a a, a step back and really just and absorb what is happening there okay guys so looking at iwm iwm did the same thing it tried to go back to this consolidate now iwm is back down to this level so if iwm here breaks uh, uh 168 again uh we're gonna go all the way down here right so these rallies are perfectly normal doesn't mean they're very bullish it, it gives us good opportunities to trade right a lot of these rallies so that's what we have to look at so if it comes back down to 171 it's going to be testing the 2019 level again the fact that this is tested already once and it's testing a second time if we have an increase in volume here we can easily gap fill down to 166 uh, if 166 breaks once again with a, a lot of selling pressure uh 152 and then uh, it won't be hard to be testing the 144 level on uh, iwm okay so this is why we have to be very careful in how we're looking at this market overall okay so that's what we have to look at so next up up is uh vix okay so vxx is what i use and uh, when i look at this uh Got to be very careful here once again right volume is uh volume is rising but vix is also going back up like i said right like if you guys watch my previous videos i want to see vix below 20 vxx below 20. if it gets below 20 it gives me a little bit more confidence in the market right now the market overall is is scared it's it's nervous uh not doesn't know exactly which way i want to go a lot of consumer sentiment is bearish the fed uh you know have to take action now their hands are being held yellen admitted last week that she made a policy error uh you know with anticipating that inflation isn't that bad but it actually is now they're saying that they're not worried about recession well it looks like a recession could already be in play with gdp contracting in the united states so be very careful about what is being spread out in the media just do your own analytical research okay so gold i've discussed like i said i won't be short below 160 i'll be short below 164 possibly to 160 if it breaks that then possibly to 157 but you know that's something that we want to keep our eyes on and be very careful of this okay the other thing i want to talk about is these sectors market sectors here okay 
the S and P 500, right? If you guys, this is a simple tool that I want you that you know you guys should be using, uh, and the simple tool is it talks about uh, on Yahoo Finance that you guys can go here. I talked about this in uh, my previous videos, and uh, and just look at just S and P 500, just search up SPY, okay, and go under holdings. And look at how much sectors these make. Consumer cyclical makes up about, uh, you know, 10%. Tech makes tech makes up about 24. Uh, uh, XLF, which is financials, makes up about 13. So if tech is XLK, okay, and tech is has a head and shoulder pattern and it continues to break down, and then financials, which is XLF, are continuing to break down as well. Right, so this that makes up a majority of the S and P 500, and then you add like say consumer cyclicals to that, or consumer discretionary, uh, you know, or consumer staple. You add these to, these are sectors to that, the sectors continue to break down. Why would the S and P 500 rise? Okay, ask yourself that question and be observant of what's going on in the market. Okay, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin consolidated at this level. This is a big level. Uh, consolidated now it has a big sell-off here with rising with volume covered this uh, gap fill uh, it looks like it's, it's headed towards uh, what it to me looks like it headed towards 20,000 and if it breaks the 16 if it breaks 16 600 we're gonna have a huge problem here right now already a huge problem in Bitcoin broke up tested this level again broke out tested this level again and it broke down here so now we'll see what it does at 20,345 so this is a big big level for bitcoin and something that everyone should be paying attention to if you are trading bitcoin all right guys so the overall market is tough be careful trade safe I uh, hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll be coming out with videos every day. If you guys are looking to join our community, the link is in the bio. We try to make money on a daily basis and we also make sure we protect our money and we talk about what to add in a long-term portfolio. That's all in our community. See you guys soon.